What is happening everybody? Welcome back to another video. It is a freezing cold week here in Washington State. I have had my pellet stove cranked in the shop and it is 52 degrees in here. Definitely not warm enough to paint. So I'm going to have to kind of push the paint projects off for a little while until it warms up. So I can at least keep the shop 60, 65. I think that would probably be enough to paint. By 50 degrees, I don't think the paint will ever dry. So I'm finding some other things to do in the shop. I figured I'd bring you guys along. And I also have a few questions for you for some ideas in the shop as well. So let's hop into it. Let's go run up in the loft upstairs and I'll show you what I got scheming. So you guys know the shop, we got a big loft that runs I think it's 12 foot deep, runs the whole width of the shop. Let's run up there real quick. I got some other stuff in here. I paint some doors and trim for the house. But up here, I got, this is basically all my storage up here. And the thing with it is I get, when I'm painting, when I'm grinding metal, like building bumpers and everything, all this stuff gets filthy. This is a lot of, uh, I, I used to part out dirt bikes. So a lot of dirt bike parts, car parts, stuff that I'm selling that I want to keep clean. And all that dust comes up here and makes a big freaking mess. So what I think I want to do is wall this off right here and just put a door in. That will keep everything up here nice and clean. And I already have some lumber to do it. So should be pretty easy to do really. But I got a question for you guys. What should I do with this little setup? So what the other guy, the guy I bought the house from, what he had set up here, as you can see, this little crate he was putting something, I guess, heavy up here, and he had like a winch set up on here, and you'd basically put whatever you want in there, lift it up into here, and then this whole thing pivots like that, you can see, on this main post. So this post is tied into this whole loft, and it's extremely strong. But what I did when I put the office down there, you can see the roof, the office insulation right there. The uh, the cart isn't gonna work anymore. I almost thought about cutting this whole pipe down, dropping everything down underneath you know, the roof level here and extending this main beam out and then putting some sort of a winch or pulley system on that. I think that'd be kind of cool for pulling motors and kind of hanging whatever on it. But I haven't exactly decided what I want to do with that. I do want to utilize it some way because I already have it. And it would be kind of cool to, like I said, put a winch or a pulley system on there just so I can lift up heavy stuff. This is this is very beefy. It's a very, very stout post. So I should be able to lift a decent amount of weight off of it. But either way, shoot me your ideas down in the comments. Let's get to framing this wall in. I got to get the truck out of here. Hopefully the sawdust doesn't make a mess on my freshly painted door there. But let's get the truck out of here and get cutting some lumber. <laughs>
All right guys, got the wall in. It was a bit of a tight fit, a little bit of hammer treatment and it slid in. Another thing, getting it up here was a major pain. I had to take the whole railing off because that right there, the wall was hitting against the ceiling right there. So railing, I pulled the whole railing off, but either way, we are in. I do gotta run to town, grab a door and some plywood for the outside and we can finish it up. Well, before I run to town to grab a door, I wanna do something real quick to the pellet stove. So trying to keep this place warm, especially this week, it is freezing cold. And this is like probably, I don't know, I'd say six hours. And you can see there's so much ash buildup and just kind of unburnt pellets. So I did some research and a lot of people are saying there's issues with this kind of burn pot um, design. So. They actually pull this plate out and make a little new burn box that you, you drop down inside of there. So I might mess around with something real quick, see if I can come up with something that burns a little better and doesn't build up so much ash in the burn pot. All right, I did some more reading. So how this system works is the air comes in and on each side of this burn box, it's a chamber, and you can see all the little holes, and then that big one there on the top. Same thing on this side, you can see the big hole here, and then a bunch of smaller, like eighth inch holes down here. So actually what a lot of people do is they plug these bigger holes up top, and that forces a lot more air underneath. Also, there's holes at the bottom of that box too. So it forces more air underneath the burn plate, and forces the air up through the pellets to help burn the pellets hotter and actually burn them 100%. So I'm gonna try that first before I go through and weld up a new burn box. I'm just gonna plug these two holes and we'll try it out. We'll give it like eight hours, see how much ash buildup we get and see if it burns any better, hotter. Um, some people say it does burn hotter and cleaner. So let's try that before we build up a box. All right, we got the fire ripping and it does look like the flame is a lot better. Before, with all the air coming in on the sides where we plugged it off, the flame was just kind of like flipping around everywhere. And so far it does seem to burn a little bit cleaner. It hasn't been burning for long, but it does look like it's completely burning the pellets. So we might be onto something with blocking some holes off. I'm gonna let that burn all day. At the end of the day, we'll see what it does. But we got, to run into town. I'm gonna take the four-door Tacoma with the TDI in it. I got the trailer hooked up. This is honestly the first uh, trip I've really done in the, in, the, in the truck itself and towing a trailer. I guess we'll see how it does. I do have to pick up a few things in town. That's why I'm bringing the trailer, but we gotta bring the truck to a paintless dent repair dude. He wants to just look at it, make sure it's something he wants to tackle and then probably another day I'll drop it off to him and he can pull all the dents out of it before we get to paint.
Well, we are cruising. My speedo is off. It's about five off. So right now we're going about 60, a little under 2,500 RPM. Uh, looks like about 14 pounds of boost and 950 degrees. This is a little bit of an incline, but pretty much flat. So really not too bad. I thought it would be a little bit hotter. You see, 9, 930, it's dropping off a little bit. It's a little more flat right here. But all in all, this thing has got plenty, plenty of power to pull a trailer. I think the biggest thing with the TDIs in these trucks is the exhaust temp. But really, it uh, so far hasn't gone much above like 1200 degrees on a hill. Uh, there was a decent hill back there, only hit about 1100 degrees, so really not too bad. All right guys, we're pulling this pretty decently steep hill, and we are 50 miles an hour, like 2200 RPM, and we're staying locked in on about 1000 degrees, 1050 right there. So actually, very, very impressed with how this thing pulls hills with the trailer. Yeah, the trailer's empty, but it's kind of a boxy trailer, so it kind of does catch the wind pretty good but this thing's staying pretty cool really all right guys we made it back home truck did really good other than it did go into limp mode one time i'm not really sure i wasn't even at full boost i was at like half throttle just accelerating and it went into limp modes so the tune might need just a little bit of work but other than that i'm actually very happy with how this thing pulls a trailer i do have a little bit of weight in there now i actually bought a sheet of eighth inch plate and a sheet of 3 16 plate because I do need to build bumpers for this truck. I'm about out of steel, so I needed that stuff. It is insane what that steel costs with the good old Joe Biden tax on it. I used to buy an eighth inch sheet, a four by eight sheet for like 80 bucks, probably about a year ago when I built the bumpers for that green Raptor line truck. I spent 80 bucks a sheet. Now they're almost 400 freaking dollars. I spent 800 bucks on that one 4x8 sheet of 8th inch and a one 4x8 sheet of 3 16 800 freaking dollars. Insane. But I need it. I got to build these bumpers. I guess it is what it is. I got to get out and unload this stuff. It is absolutely freezing cold. It's getting down into the negatives at night. So it is very cold out. But I got to get out and unload all this stuff in the shop. All right, we got the door in. I'm no carpenter and uh, it's probably not the most professional install, but it uh, opens and closes. So I guess that will do. I know the screws aren't supposed to be visible, but you know what, it's in the shop. I'm not really too worried about it. So we're good to go with that. Now we gotta go get our OSB down there and cut it to fit this area here, block that all off. Yes, I know there is plywood here, but it is so freaking expensive right now. I just went OSB. All I'm trying to do is keep dust out of here. So OSB will work just fine.
All right, we got our plywood up. We are done now. I can keep this room clean. I will say it was a bit of a pain in the butt to get over here and screw these uh, boards on, especially that far one. I should have just taken that cart out of the way before I put this wall in. I can still get it down maybe with some help, but I should have taken that out of the way. It would have been a lot easier to screw that far board on. One last thing we're gonna do before we end this super random video. I bought the lady some uh, flag stickers for the back of the Forerunner, the very back side windows. So we're gonna get the Forerunner in here and throw those stickers on and see how it looks. There we go, stickers are on, looking good. I actually really do like the look of that. It looks really nice. Also, the stove, it's probably been eight hours since I lit it. And you can see it still is kind of building up, if you can see that in there, still building up a decent pile. What I'm gonna try to do actually, next time I turn it off, I'm going to plug the holes underneath that burn plate. And some people say to do the top one, some people say, to do the bottom one so I'm gonna try the top ones I'm gonna try the bottom and kind of see if it works any better I don't really notice any more heat coming out of it but either way we got a few more tests to do and maybe if none of these work I still may build another burn pot for it well that's a wrap for this one guys I know it was kind of a random video doing lots of different stuff but hope you enjoyed it when I was in town I did bring the Tacoma by the paintless dent repair guy and he wants me to take all the bondo out of those doors because he said he could most likely get those things straight without any bondo in them so that is going to be very very helpful also I got to pull the headliner out and a few other things for him so he can get access into everywhere that he needs to get to pop all the dents out so he's going to go around the whole truck and pop all the dents, all the dings. Some of them probably won't come out perfect, but it's gonna eliminate a lot of work on my end. So I'm not super good at pulling metal around, and I don't wanna put a whole lot of Bondo in that thing. So that's why I decided to bring it to the Paintless Dent Repair guy. So next video, we gotta get that truck ready, and then go drop it off, and see what he can do to it. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.